this is an update on the uh, progress on our Liverpool Overhead Railway project. Uh, first of all, the work that uh, I'm doing with the uh, motor car, the motor carriage, the powered uh, driving car. And you can see some of the parts here. I'll just uh, show you the others that are in where I am in progress. So that's the, the bogey in position as it will be under the motor car, but we don't need to see that because I've already done a separate model of the bogey, though I do have to alter it. Um, and you can see the beginnings of the car here. I've had a lot of false starts on making this, and you can see here various versions of the plans. The most reliable are, of course, those by Mike Edge, and I'll certainly recommend his um, kits, uh, which you can, you can the uh, details are on um, the uh, ING for Trains website. I've got a link there to his uh, website as well. So if you're you're making, as it were, real models as opposed to virtual models. He's the, he's the uh, guy to go to there. And his have proved to be the most reliable. These were actually taken from, these ones over here, were taken from um, the original article as published in The Engineer back in the um, 1890, whatever it was, six, four, three, uh, when the, when the um, uh, Liverpool overhead was just being built. And, um, but after a lot of uh, grief, in creating a fair bit of that, it, following those plans, um, I found that they were completely wrong, or rather they were lacking in the sort of detail and even some of the, s the sizing was incorrect. So um, that's a warning for us all, not to rely on the um, uh, details as given by the um, uh, original publications back in the 19th century. Always check. And comparing them with Mike's drawings, uh, which he's very kindly let me have, um, that I've been able to sort it out. So this is a 40-foot uh, motor carriage. It's going to be number 42. There will be the 35-foot trailer to make as well, and of course other numbers for uh, making up the complete three-car sets. Now the um, uh, the way I've done this, uh, and this is the reason why I wanted to show you this. Uh, before going on to just giving you a quick look at how Bob is getting on with the route, which has been seen really so accurate now, getting so close to the original, within a few yards of every position, you know, it really is going to be a cracking route. Um, well, the, what I wanted to show you here was that I'm using, in GMAX, I'm using editable splines. That is, I'm using uh, splines here in the top left, uh, and then using these, I tend not to use the line, I use the rectangle circle ellipse. Uh, I don't think I've, maybe I've used the star on one occasion. I don't use the text because that would create a lot of polys. And so text stuff tends to be in the form of uh, textures, which I apply to these. Now, um, if you uh, look here, you can see this is the driving end, but there is a fundamental problem with it, um, which is that it's uh, the wrong way round. Uh, because it's just drawn from this. So I've just been looking from down here through my editable splines and up to here. Now, uh, what you might ask is an editable, editable spline. So first of all, I'm going to undo why. There we are. So this is where I am working on the motor car. And this is really still stage one. Finally, after going through all sorts of uh, problems with uh, getting the um, getting the thing correct uh, and um, what I need to do here is uh, swap this round so that it's actually I mean there we're looking front on but actually if it was if I was more accurate it should be let's see, 180 that's where it should be so that's where it that's where those that's why I'm saying it's back to front because the higher windows there um, should be over on the right and the um, lower windows with the driving compartment of the number um, should be over there on the left. And then we've got these tumble homes. So you can see the beginning of a tumble home, just the outline being produced there. So, <coughs> so for those of you <coughs> who are modeling in um, GMAX, uh, just to give you some more tips or my own sort of experience with it. Um, I'm going to turn that back. We are 180. Just make sure I was checking down here for the angles. Uh, and um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn those round. 
So you might think, well, you could just rotate them. Um, and I suppose you could do that. That's perfectly okay. But what I wanted to do was to show you the nature of these. The this is uh, so that's already been grouped. So we cancel that and we'll ungroup it. Forgot where I left this. It's been a slow process getting here. So I'm just making a clone of that one, just by holding down Shift and then moving it. And um, if we look into the editing we've got an editable spline and then it's been extruded in other words we produce an outline like this and then I've extruded it as a 3D into the third dimension um, using the extrude um, it's greyed out there because I've already used it it's not a suitable thing to extrude at the moment so if I remove that extrusion just by deleting that then you'll see this is the uh, editable spline and if I show you the vertices, there we are, those are the vertices that make the spine. So we've got straight segments and we've got curved segments. So segments there, look. Straight segments, curved segments, and those are the vertices that make up the, that shape. And the way I do that is by starting off with a simple spline, like a rectangle, if I just draw a rectangle down here, and then maybe add a window and a door. Let's just say that and um, just make the rectangle, I mean obviously you've got to get these in the right size, position, everything like that as a, as editable spline, but, but if it's all going to be of the one piece then come down, so I've right clicked on that and come down make it into an editable spline, the, the large rectangle and I like to give it a brighter colour I don't know if that's going to be, yeah it's brighter enough isn't it and then use the attach button down here and just and you'll see it change the cursor changes so you can attach there we are look, little vertices to vertices and as it ch attaches itself becomes part of this then um, the color changes to match and there look, also and then basically in a nutshell all you then need to do is click on extrude and you'll see you've immediately got a three dimensional and I've set the extrusion there to one inch because I'm making this two inches wide and so and it's in two parts so two layers so it's going to be one inch so that's how you do how you extrude a an editable spline now that's not the way I'm going to leave it eventually what I will do because if we have a look here at the polygon counter we've got 52 polys just for this very simple um, shape so if I now eventually when I have finished all of the editing and this is the crucial thing about editable splines get it right, get it absolutely right, save it and then go to version 2 or whatever, save it as version 2 and only then collapse all down to a poly and from 52 it drops down to 14 which means it's going to be a much smaller hit on the graphics memory, the graphics card on your machine when it loads, so we delete that. So you can see here at the moment that that is, if we go back to polygon counter I've got 102 there and now if I was to extrude that one there's extrude 392 400 polys just under but then if I was remember this I'm just mucking about with this just to show you so because that's a clone cop I don't want to touch this um, then uh, what I can do now is I can um, uh, collapse that down to and you'll see it's down to 96 polys which is much better for the and all of my models when I export them are always reduced down to their polys at least today I mean uh, you know in recent years and the first ones I was doing they were all over the place um, so okay so that's something worth knowing now we're going to correct this which um, I could, what I could do is I could if you imagine that this um, not that because that's now an edible poly but if I take another copy uh, uh, what I could do is um, I could remove the extrusion and rotate the whole thing 180 degrees fair enough um, pretty pointless though though it does give the correct it puts those on the correct side um, because what I can what I will obviously do is I will just rotate my extrusion 180 degrees, so that's the blue, always I'm colour coding, 
the next layer out and I'm using two layers let me show you how why that is because of um, so each layer reproduces the window but the blue layer is the background and the red layer gives me the that extra detail above the three windows that blue reveal there and what I'll do is I'll delete unnecessary faces when I come to converting this to an editable poly. And then the only other part I need to re 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 um, rotate are the window frames, which are together, these two are, these two here, are two inches. The window frames poly is an uh, inch and a half. So you get that inset. And of course I've got to add glass and other details. But now we've got the um, those the one, two, three windows should be on the left hand side, and there they are. It's because this here um, I've rotated it around in order to uh, uh, do the original drawing. I suppose the, the uh, better way of doing it, just the way I did it, is rotate that 180 and then move it. Where are we? Move it on the Y. Come on, Y axis, not Z. Y axis back here. And now you'll see that it's in the correct place. But because I'm still going to do this, and I tend to work this way, I don't know why. It's just your own preference. Um, so let's get Z. <laughs> no, because it's one side, I can't pick it up. I can't rotate it from that side. There we are. 180. 180. And then <coughs> bring it back there just the way I work. As long as you know what you're doing then that's fine. So my next step is going to be to produce the tumble homes and so that means if I just reveal everything again uh, that means that this panel here this part of the side of the carriage and you'll notice I've left gaps for the doors and the door is actually I've got a door somewhere when is a door not a door oh it's still in three bits there I've still got to extrude it over there you can see the three bits you've got the blue the red and the yellow so I'm tending to use those color codes so the, the, the blue is the lowest background there and the red then is gives me the detail the panel detail raised panel detail and it's only raised an inch but it's just enough to give a bit of a shadow and a bit of depth and then the window frames going so this is wrong here. so I'm going to have to change that and it's okay though because uh, if I go up to wireframe I know it looks complicated but it ain't uh, and I click on the well this is all grouped now each side each of these sides is grouped you can see so I've got all three there but if I ungroup them then I can go in and uh, each item there is um, extruded so I can delete the extrusion and I can well, maybe it's not not grouped. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? <laughs> so, but I could delete that extrusion, alter the spline, alter the vertices of the spline, drop that down. That's all that's needed, really, on both of them. Uh, lose the window frame now. I won't need that uh, because it's simply the. Let's go back to smooth highlights. It's going to be conceal. It's going to be the access, the driver's access into the tumble home. So it's just going to be an open space there, and the tumble home wraps around it on the outside, sticking outside. And there's the beginning, that's that line there, and then I'm going to make these bits here. Give it the depth, of course, and uh, away we go. Uh, but it's all slow. It's slow work, and uh, you've got to get it right at this stage. This is where the whole thing come, it begins to come together. Uh, let's just hide that again. It's always sort of irritating. I see the bogey there. Um, Another example, uh, here's the roof, and here's a copy of the roof, so I'm just going to have a quick look at that, show you that. And this again was produced from an editable spline. What I did is I made the centre line of the roof, so the curve, if you can see that there, let me drop that down, you can see the curve, let's have a look at here. So you can see that I've done the editable spline first, which is the profile of the roof, which is what you see here in the plan. So having done the profile, I then extruded it, but I extruded it 
we have a look at the extrusion, you can set the number of segments by which it's, in, it's extruded. So it was extruded um, right the way uh, across as a, a curve, and then with each of these elements, once I was able to do that, I could go into the edit, I could add edit mesh, and then I could adjust each uh, segment of vertices, and I, I was doing that up here end on viewing end on so all I did is I picked up each I use the now what do they call that uh, scaling and I scaled in pairs so that one and that one and then scaled it down to the plan if we have a look at the so it doesn't really show because that's the uh, that's actually the wrong uh, plan but it gives you an idea you scale it down to match that curve obviously it was moved over and then the next pair so that you get a uniform curve each side. Obviously there's a bit of a crank there, but overall I think the effect is pretty good. And then I actually textured it just to give it, make sure I was in the right, um, in the right uh, area. And if we were to look at that, and we were to look at the polygon counter, 348, well that's gonna come down to a third, less than a third of that to reduce the size of the, um, uh, the actual model, the actual ex uh, exported model. So still early days on that, um, but getting there. And once this one has been uh, beaten, as it were, beaten into submission, because the next thing uh, after I've done the tumble homes will be to, there's an extra piece to go in under the roof there, put the floor in, the seating, and then tidy up all these corners uh, by edit the meshing, uh, deleting um, surfaces which extrude onto each other fair bit of tidying up to do which will overall reduce the poly count for the body uh, as I say put the seating in put the doors in although they're going to be exported separately because they uh, we want them to open up uh, and then we're not far off finishing now not far off finishing that one uh, and then of course from there will be the trailer car and there's the end of the trailer car you can see there the plan and there is the door that's going to fit into there except that again I can see I've made a, a mission there should be a panel set in here so I need to go back into the red part, part. this is probably, no it's not grouped so you can see here I, I will just remove the extrusion just delete it that just gives me a if I put it into wireframe the red is still there you can see it highlighted I will add in an extra rectangle and then I'll re-extrude it as um, the red to put the panel in. And then there is this beading to go around. There's a couple of bits of beading there uh, to go around uh, the whole of the uh, carriage. And um, also just looking here, I've also missed out, I can see on the red, uh, on this here, I've missed out some of the inset there. In fact, I think the door may be too wide so that's going to take a bit of sorting out as well and I want to get that right because then that end, pe that end piece will be reproduced for each end of the trailer and much of this uh, positioning of these windows and that will be used for the trailer as well so there we are that's the carriage so um, I'm now going to just jump up to um, this is uh, where Bob has got with the um, viaduct which is very 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 close now to being precisely the arrangement of the original uh, and you can see here we've got the um, temporary stations in these are the placeholders uh, which will be uh, changed for uh, properly modeled stations on the viaduct uh, which is you know <laughs> down the line as it were this is a big much bigger project than we first thought it just grows and grows because there's so much more that we want to do uh, but after the motor car and oh, several motor cars and trailers have been done, well, the trailer will probably just be this single trailer to use on all of them. Uh, although there are a few variations I might be able to bring in. Uh, I want to try and give a bit of variety to the rolling stock and there are some changes with the tumble homes and that sort of thing. And the only, um, the only co my only contribution to this new latest revision, and, and they're almost, I mean, Bob's working on it, you know, we both, we're both stuck at home now, so, um, Neither of us are allowed out, so we're both working away on this, off and on, although I'm doing some work work as well. 
Um, and there's plenty of other things to do for both of us. Um, but the only sort of major change that I've been able to offer is these uh, refuges, which appeared at what appeared to be no sort of set distance. We tried to find out if there were any set distances uh, for these refuges. And obviously, they're for line trackside workers, and I, these are, this is a very simple modification. This is now a 10 foot section of viaduct as fixed track and the splines have been added to it, you know, connected up to it. And so it just gives us that uh, little sort of uh, connection, that little um, uh, little bit of uh, detail that was missing. I did look at doing the down pipes, the drain pipes that ran along here to drain this, but frankly the detail, they were so, <laughs> so um, obscured by the girdering and so limited by the um, the viewing and, and also the photographs that we had that I thought it just wasn't worth it and it was uh, so I've left those out um, but here as I say the key thing about this route is that it is precise I, you know Bob is it's within a couple of yards now of um, the overall length and the stations are certainly uh, in the right places and um, we've, we've really had to he's had a lot of fun trying to get the exact positions because the different books don't don't agree and they don't agree with the Ordnance Survey map which is what we've we just started with as well. In fact I think they're still using those. Let's have a look. I thought we still had some we maybe still got some Ordnance Survey. No he's oh yes I think I saw briefly saw. Let me have a look there. No. no. We did have some Ordnance Survey tiles that we put in to try and uh, help with the layout. I'm not sure if they're still here. This is near the pier head station. No, I don't think they are. But overall you can see that there's been a, a lot of very careful work there and we've certainly got the look of it now I think sorted. Uh, and all of this here as I've mentioned in a previous video is the is Bob giving much more detail on that? This is to guide us for the layout. These are all the docks, and I do have a mad scheme for modelling all the docks, whether it'll come to anything or not. And here's the famous um, duck under, uh, not quite as it was because we've still got to uh, alter. Or this is a placeholder effect effectively using this viaduct spline to dip under the uh, coal route that was at the Lancashire, Lancashire and Yorkshire coal route. You can see here some of the uh, tracks that are going to go out onto the docks. The other thing of course about all of this is there was a double line of, of at ground level of the freight dockside railway running underneath the viaduct and I think that's brilliant. If there's anything with docks and freight that's, that's me. So for a lot of the length of this there's going to be a double track set into cobbles or whatever underneath the uh, Liverpool overhead so there we are that's as far as we've got so that's the latest update as of the 26th of March and I hope it's of interest I hope you've enjoyed this video this brief overlook here we are with a curve going around to the tunnel at Dingle and Dingle station somewhere along here uh, that's where we just put the yeah we're using <laughs> Great Western Railway AEC rail cars it's just a, it's a temporary something to run along the route um, before we get the motor cars done so there we are the Liverpool Overhead Railway the latest part of the project and uh, the work that we're doing at the moment so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, do please subscribe to my channel uh, to make sure you get the new ones as they come out and um, do please leave comments or suggestions or whatever you like really um, onto the uh, onto the YouTube and I'll aim to answer any queries or questions that you might have. So there we are, the Liverpool Overhead Railway continues to advance slowly but surely right the way to Seaforth Sands, where Seaforth Sands is going to be and this is where the um, depot it's going to be and uh, so we're just placeholding at the moment but we are getting there this is a brilliant project and we're both enjoying uh, working on it tremendously